So now we then start um, asking the question, okay, what can we do if the transmitter has knowledge of the channel state information? That is a very, very important question. So basically, uh, who has information about the channel state? Receiver. The receiver has to give the information to the transmitter. Okay. So basically at the receiver, you estimate what is your channel SNR or channel state and that information will get fed back. For the moment, just uh, ignore the box which is uh, indicated as power allocation. Okay. So just look at the, so you will, once you get this information, you can then fine tune and pick the appropriate channel coding uh, mechanism. So for example, if I knew that it was gamma 3, I, I won't transmit with the encoding scheme for gamma 2. I will actually choose the gamma. So this is, this is a uh, way by which we, we actually want to get the, the best out of the system. So basically you feed this information back to the transmitter and then the transmitter gets uh, uh, cal calculates the uh, 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 calculates what, which of the uh, schemes that we can transmit and then we can transmit so now given that i have csit scenario how do i achieve capacity this is a uh, graph again this is there in goldsmith so i i just explain the graph so whatever is the snr let me quantize it or the channel conditions in the SN channel. We looked at the case with three SNRs. It can be some n SNR quantized values. For each of those SNRs, you choose the optimum modulation and coding scheme. At the receiver, you uh, 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 couple it with the corresponding uh, demodulation and the decoding scheme. So what is fed back? The instantaneous SNR is fed back. If it is gamma 1, you choose the upper encoder and then it, it will go through and at the receiver, you will choose the corresponding decoder. If, the, if it is the best possible channel, it is gamma n, you choose that. So basically, what you are doing is you are constantly switching between the different modulation encoding schemes so that you can get the maximum out of the channel. Okay? So this is how with feedback, we could get very good performance. Okay? Now is this, is this part what we have, what we have uh, indicated, is, is that clear? Basically, uh, how do we achieve? the uh, capacity information uh, in a um, uh, in a channel where the cha uh, snr is, is changing yes okay so basically you you, um, you you get you pick up the received signal and one of the things in a coherent receiver so if you uh, go back to our original scheme one of the things that you will have to do in a coherent receiver is to estimate alpha so that is the your complex gain term. So a coherent receiver must estimate alpha. Once you know alpha, it, the channel state information is known because basically it will be proportional to alpha squared. Right? So uh, the receiver based on uh, the uh, measurement of alpha will be able to get uh, an idea of the channel state information. So I mean, uh, b uh, but that would require you to have a coherent receiver. But coherent receivers automatically will know what the channel conditions are. And the, uh, accordingly, see for example, if alpha is, is very small, then you will know that uh, you are in very bad channel conditions because the, the noise level, very, uh, very interesting uh, uh, thing, the noise level does not change. So maybe we will just take a, a two, one minute uh, um, detour to answer, answer this question. So supposing I, I, I am drawing this one. So this is signal level, signal level. Okay. So I am just drawing different levels. So the, the level that we are uh, always uh, worried about is where is the noise power, where is the noise floor. So noise, noise power, so this corresponds to Pn. Now depending upon the, assuming there was no fading, let us assume that this was my signal power Ps, this is my signal power. Okay. So, the SNR basically if I wrote all of these in dB, if I showed all of these are shown in dB, this is also shown in dB, then the difference between these two is actually my SNR, gamma, that is gamma. So basically gamma in dB is Ps in dBW or dBm, it does not matter which one you choose watts or milliwatts, you would have to choose the noise power also in dBW or dBm 
or dBm. The difference between the two will be a dimensionless quantity because it is power by power dimensionless that is dB and that is what is the SNR. So now what we are uh, saying is that uh, there is a nominal level that the signal uh, that the receiver expects that is, uh, that is PS. Now if all of a sudden there has been a significant fading that is happening and your signal power actually dropped down to PS1. Okay. So, so this was this was gamma instantaneously this is gamma 1. Okay. So you can see what happens is the noise power does not change. Right. Noise power is uh, nothing happens to noise. The only thing that can get affected is your signal power. So how do I know the channel condition and how do I know SNR? All I need to do is measure the signal power. Once I know the signal power, I know the noise power is always constant. So I can tell you what the channel conditions are. So to, um, to answer your question, uh, the, the scenario that we are uh, dealing with is that in an AWGN channel, it would have been a fixed gamma. Now in a, in, a, in, a, in a fading channel, sometimes it is at this level, sometimes it is at a different signal level, call it PS2 that, that corresponds to gamma 2 and each of these will have different impacts in terms of the performance and that is what we are trying to capture by saying and regardless of what the channel conditions are, if I am able to feed that information to the transmitter, the transmitter sends the information in the most uh, robust and optimized way for that particular channel condition that, that is possible. Okay. So maybe one more, uh, one more piece that, uh, that I would like to uh, highlight e even, uh, even before we go on to this. So let me just uh, add to this the following comments or observations. Again, uh, since the question came, I think it is a good thing to, to clarify. So let us say I have gamma 1, gamma 1 which is PS1 by Pn. Notice Pn is not changing. Then I have gamma 2 which is signal power 2 Pn because of the fading. Okay. What is happening is that the signal power is going up and down. I am using this notation, it is my own notation, uh, not decimation or uh, upsampling. It is basically saying the signal is going uh, up and down, but Pn is fixed. Okay. So this means that uh, this combination basically means that your instantaneous SNR is going to go up and down and if your SNR is going up and down your capacity this also means that your capacity is going to go up and down which is what we know from the calculations and this is what we are trying to trying to capture. Okay. Uh, Maybe just one uh, last observation just so that uh, your, uh, we link completely with the communications uh, background part. So how is Pn measured? Why is it constant? Why, is the thing, why does it does not change? Pn corresponds to N0 times B, correct? N0 is N, you, basically it is N0 by 2 times 2B but uh, N0 B is what uh, gives you. So N0 is your noise spectral density. Okay. What are the units of noise spectral density? Watts per hertz. Okay. So this is watts per hertz. This is watts per hertz, bandwidth is in hertz. So the combination will give you watts. Okay. Power, the noise power will be there. Now uh, actually what does uh, noise spectral density actually depend on? I think that is also good for us to know. See noise spectral density and not actually uh, uh, depends on k times t where k is Boltzmann's constant. Okay. k is uh, Boltzmann's constant and again it, it, it just for completeness let us just write down the values 6.023 into 10 power minus 23 this would be joules per Kelvin that is what Bolts, Boltzmann's constant is given us. Okay. And uh, we always take the uh, ambient temperature as 300 Kelvin. So K times T is what specifies the noise floor. Okay. So I am sure you have done this calculation and you are uh, familiar with it. So the problem is you know uh, actually uh, I want uh, watts per hertz. Okay. So basically K times T will give me joules. Okay. 
So uh, the uh, joules per second is equal to watts. So joules if I write it as watts seconds this can be written as watts per hertz. So okay everything is uh, everything is clean uh, basically uh, k times t actually gives you a quantity which is in watts per hertz and uh, you multiply it by the bandwidth you will get watts and therefore uh, we are able to get. So the noise power so p n in general for any receiver is calculated as k times t times b and sometimes we make it little easier just by specifying n0 but uh, you do not need to do that you can actually uh, compute what will be the noise floor and then calculate the noise power and this is how uh, this is how it is done okay. So uh, at the end of the day uh, what we are interested in is the fact that the uh, SNR is fluctuating and therefore capacity is fluctuating so therefore it is a challenge for us in terms of achieving what we want to achieve. Okay, so let us quickly summarize uh, what we have said so far that uh, this is the scenario that we have and that means our uh, uh, information of over the channel state has been transmitted from the receiver to the transmitter. So CSI has gone from the RX to the TX. So we are in the regime of what we call as CSIT that means channel state information known to the transmitter known to the transmitter okay. So what is the capacity of the channel when you are uh, when, when it is known. So the capacity under this condition would be summation over i the different SNRs b times logarithm base 2 1 plus gamma i multiplied by do not forget this the probability that you get that SNR f gamma of gamma is the SNR okay. So this is actually your ergodic capacity and the ergodic capacity can be achieved only if the transmitter has knowledge of the channel state otherwise you will get outage uh, you will get uh, you will have to design for the worst case channel or you know you will do. So this capacity is only meaningful if the transmitter has information. Now in the general case you uh, if you did not quantize this you actually wrote it down as a continuous that the SNR is not a discrete random variable but a continuous random variable not a problem we can write down the ergodic capacity as an integral. So ergodic capacity for a fading channel in which we know the SNR distribution can be given to be c is equal to integral 0 to infinity SNR goes from 0 to infinity b times logarithm base 2 1 plus gamma f gamma of gamma d gamma. So basically the summation became an integral okay. So in the general case we say that the ergodic capacity is defined as the expected value of the capacity of the channel which is given by logarithm of logarithm base 2 of 1 plus gamma expected value that is exactly what it is we basically have gone around but this ergodic capacity is meaningful only if the transmitter has knowledge of the channel state and that is the only time under which we can get that okay. So uh, let us now uh, let us now quickly uh, calculate what it is that uh, that we can achieve. Uh, uh, when when we have this information and then uh, and then and then build build on that so basically what this one says is that uh, i can feed back the information i can choose the appropriate capacity and i can then transmit it so here is here is uh, a summary statement of what uh, what we have what we have done so far what we have done so far uh, basically says that uh, find out what the snr is and then compute the capacity assuming this information is been com communicated to the uh, to the transmitter we can then achieve the ergodic capacity. Mm -hmm.